There we go. Ready when you are. Hi everyone, welcome back to Canary Cast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Before we go any further, Jacob's back with me. Jacob, good to have you back, mate. You feeling better? I'm alive. Finally, I'm alive. Norwich didn't help in the midweek with the looting game. Mm. They kind of revived me after the Sheffield Wednesday comeback, and now I am back. <laughs> yeah, and Norwich City are back. I thought that was a pretty decent win tonight. Norwich beating Forest 2-1 at home. I thought it was a proper championship game, to be fair, Jacob. Yeah, I thought we played well. Well enough. I don't think Forest were as bad as their 21st position place states them. They have good players. We we thought that. We said off um, camera beforehand, didn't we, about that they do have threats and they did prove that. But, you know, again, we're a patched up team. We did the job and that's what you've got to do. 10 wins from 17. That's, that's not too bad considering our yeah. squad this season. Yeah, and we're looking pretty at the top as well tonight with uh, Reading losing as well. Four points clear of third. That's a big total. You've now yeah. got to go into Blackburn at the weekend and really hammer through that and keep going because everyone else is dropping points. Bournemouth dropped points. Watford, meh. Brentford, meh. All of them are meh. We're going to win this league <laughs> if, if our team if our team gets back all in all. Get Tim Crawl back in goal so I feel yeah. like I'm not having a heart attack every time the ball goes back and we'll win the league. Yeah, completely agree about the Tim Crawl thing. It's, it's not quite the same, is it? Um, OK, let's start on tonight's game. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So the lineup: Zimmerman's in for Gibson. Um, and Martin in for Pojeta. Um, I prefer Josh Martin to Pojeta. Like, I'd rather see Josh Martin on the team sheet. I don't know about you, Jacob. He, Josh Martin is looking like a really intelligent footballer, mate. For his first few cameo appearances, what's he all about? Stoke was brilliant. And then now he's, he's looking like a championship player, mate. I don't think he has the speed. I don't know about you, but I think he could become a number 10 in that position because he doesn't have the pace of a winger but I think he has the, the intelligence to play centrally I think bloody Marco Schiedman tonight or again is, I don't know I think he's off form mate he's just, he's, you know, he slows he has, it down doesn't he yeah. Every time he has slow. to be on form though for it to work as well doesn't he otherwise it just yeah. look, he looks so kind of it's just it's just so yeah. languished meh it's just yeah. yeah I can't really describe it he's just poor he's not good at anything when he's not on four. <laughs> just mm. gives the ball away sloppily, like you say, slows it down. But you know what? He did for, for the goal, for the first goal, Lungi goal. He just does yeah. cross the ball, puts it in a dangerous enough area, so you've got to credit him for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's talk about Forrest briefly, because I was expecting them to be defensive with Chris Hutton in charge. We know that more than anyone. Um, but they were deeper than Sheffield Wednesday. It was a joke at times. And again, this is this is where you've got to kind of put Norwich's um, kind of performances into perspective, isn't it? One really poor season in the Premier League, and everyone's like, right, park the bus, let's yeah. bring in the bus, <laughs> let's bring the bloody lorries. You know, you know, Hume was doing that anyway. But again, I thought we moved the ball well enough at times. I'd like to have seen us kind of get wide. We had Sorensen a couple of times in on the overlap, Martin as well. They just keep cutting in. If you go to the byline a little bit more, you maybe get, mm. like Stigman did for the goal, you know, you just give yourself a bit more space to be able to clip it in. And as as we saw, Forrest's defender was, was pretty dire when, when the yeah. ball went in. And um, yeah, it, it's good enough. I'm really impressed with Jacob Sorensen again. You know, he, he struggled with Lolly once when he hit the post. But you know yeah. what? Lolly's a, a good winger at this level. There's no doubt when he's on it. And... It's a really good finish from Sorensen, you know. That's dropping out of the, the sky, obviously, is on a stronger foot. But you know what? You've got to keep that down. The keeper yep. should save it, obviously. But you know what? If you put it on target, mm -hmm. at least you're making the keeper make a save. And it's a good finish. And hopefully he continues. I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does with potentially Skip or Rook in the middle when mm. or if Quintero returns or we get another left back. You're spot on about the finish. It would be quite easy to be off balance and blaze that over or shank it. But he done well to control it. But you're right. At the other end, Lolly actually... He proved a problem for him and he, he kept getting inside, didn't he? He just wanted him to show him wide and eventually he got there and then knockout comes on it. <laughs> That's what, we'll go on to that. But my point is he was Lolly was allowed to cut in a lot, wasn't he? Yeah, I think the only thing like Jacob Sorrow said again, like he's not getting that much support from Josh Martin, who does need to no. learn that side of his game. Yeah. So for a midfielder, play a left back one on one most of the time, or maybe even two on one if there's Cyrus Christie or another right back comes up against him he's doing very well in that position he he's not becoming a liability I wouldn't say I'd say we were just about well we were definitely the better team first half actually Jacob I don't know why I'm being modest about it we were definitely oh, the better 100%, team 100% they had a couple of chances Lolly and Amiobi that's it and we had yeah. so we're just it's always eye over the needle stuff isn't it so it's always like oh it's so close yeah Boindir had a couple of sides Sam, Samba made a couple of good saves but we definitely deserve to be in front yeah I think we probably should have had a penalty as well first half with the uh Emmy puts in a corner near post. Timu sort of gets a, a decent connection on it with his head and, and their defender, I can't remember who it was, but he, uh, he's blocked it with his hand. The ref was only sort of 10, 15 yards away, dead in front of it and, and missed it somehow. What did you think? 
when when every player reacts and all the fans react normally it, gives you an given. indicator you know it's, it's not always it's sometimes they try and jeep you but then you only get a couple of players going for it. every player reacted so yeah i think with the current laws as well they're all very dodgy so i would say that's probably a pen but you know we've had a couple of decisions against us this, this season even sheffield wednesday we had a couple didn't we where we could have maybe had other bits and bobs and but you know what it's fine we win the game and we're happy yeah it doesn't matter this week let's talk about the second half because we started pretty well i mean forest Conceding the goal just before half time, they naturally had to come out a bit at the second half, which I think helped us certainly early on in the half to create a, a few more chances. Um, when Dia, Puki, Stiefman, they all they all had chances. Um, yeah. But then, to be honest, the rest of the half felt like Forest. If I'm being honest, Jacob. Yeah, I, I think it's like Forest and slight lull, wasn't it? Where it didn't feel like we were gonna. We weren't defending back against the wall, but Forrest were having more and more opportunities. Like you say, knockout comes on. It's just such a stupid goal. We give away such silly goals at times. Yeah. You know, we obviously have the belief that we're going to score more more than one each game now, which is is great to have. I I always feel like we're going to go and at least have another glorious chance, and we got a little bit lucky with with the winner. But you know what? Yeah. I think on the balance of play, we deserve to win. Yeah, I think it was probably deserved. It, Matt, let's talk about the goal now. We might as well. Um, when Cantwell cuts it back to Buendia, he's central, middle of the box, just outside it. Um, goes to shape it in the top right-hand corner. Massive deflection off Joe Worrell's head and goes in, in the bottom left. Do you care? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> All I care about is 34 points from 17 games. Two yeah. points a game. That's what you need to go up. That's what yeah. you need to look at as an Orange fan. I still think we'll struggle in some games coming up. You know, the, the players are coming back, but they're not going to be fully fit. I th- Ollie Skip is superhuman. How on earth he's still mm-hmm. playing with the same vigour and panache and still getting in that bite? He, yeah. he doesn't look affected. He looks like he's playing his first game against Huddersfield again. He's played 17 in a row. I don't, I don't know how he's managing it. Same with Matt two Barrett bookings, again. Only two bookings as well. That's the last two games as well. He's, apart from that, clean slate. And to, to replace a player of Alex Tete, who we've been trying to replace for the last four seasons, realistically, with a lot of experienced pros, let's be honest, Gary O'Neill never did a job. You could argue so many other players we've tried to bring in to... Yusuf Malumbu comes from my yeah. head. Like, Thompson, they're pros that have played in the Premier League. Ollie yeah. Skip, this is his first season, mate. And I'm um, so impressed with him. It's just it's just yeah. such a shame he's on loan. <laughs> yeah, it is. We're, we're never going to get him. We might as well forget about that, Jacob. But, no, um, maybe if you go up, maybe if we go up, and then. But that's still unlikely. Yeah, yeah. You just, yeah, you've just got to enjoy him now. It's horrible when you catch feelings for a lone player, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. But that's what's going to happen this season. He has been solid so far. Um, let's go for your man of the match. Uh, it's a tricky one. I'm going to be... Ha- it's between Sorensen and Josh Martin for me. I'm going to say Sor- Sorensen simply for the goal difference. You know, it, And he deserves it, I think, after... A, a lot of games in that position where again he's been solid yeah okay Lolly did do him a couple of times but he'd do that to the best left backs in the league and again without support I thought he did a good job but yeah like I say reasonable shout for Josh Martin who is creating space in and around he's doing what Todd Campbell did last season which really impressed me just finding space he's not the quickest so he's not going to run in behind but he's picking spaces dragging players out for other players to come in and yeah, I, I think he's going to be a real key player now. And fair play to him, you know, with all the in, with all the players we had at the start of the season, your Hernandez is your Dows, yeah. who are injured. Obviously, you're thinking, where is Josh Martin fitting in? But Farker seen something in him. He had a good preseason, and he definitely deserves to be in the first team now. Yeah, couldn't have put it better myself. I'll give it to Hanley myself. He won everything Hanley. in the air tonight. Um, he's been brilliant for what two months. To be fair to him and Zimmerman as well, I thought they were both very solid tonight. I don't think Lyle Taylor gave him yeah. that many problems. He turned they... Zimmerman once. That was all I can remember. And and to be fair for Christoph, you know, we've criticised him this season because he hasn't looked right. This to that, Tonight, I thought he looked a little bit more back to himself, a little yeah. bit more solid, a little bit more I'm trusting my own ability. Didn't really give any stupid passes away, which he has done. Same with mm. Grant. And he was solid. I know Forrest weren't great in behind. If they, if they put someone in behind, then they both struggle. <laughs> Yeah. Saturday is going to be a massive test for both of them, but a good, solid reintroduction to the team, and hopefully we build on that. Yeah, one last thing, and we'll briefly mention Blackburn. Um, did you see Todd Cantwell's barnet? What is going on there? <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow, mate. <laughs> He's got a little braid. Very eccentric, here. isn't he? Very yeah, eccentric. Fair, fair play, that's but... Todd. That's yeah. Todd. Uh, he, he came on tonight and, again, looked bright enough. He's going to be key for, for the, these weeks. He yeah. needs to keep himself fit gain on the uh, the match time he gets and really hammer down now because otherwise he's going to become a little bit forgotten yeah. in terms of the Premier League. That's where he wants to be. He wants to be Premier League team. And he was Premier League quality last season. 
this season obviously hasn't worked out for him just yet, but hopefully it does and he becomes a key player for the rest of the season. He's normally a player that likes to make a bit of noise, isn't he? You think last year when he grabbed his goals, you know, big hype train around him. And he hasn't really made a noise this season. He's yet to do that. You're spot on. Um, let's talk about Blackburn because we're, we're running over a bit here. What are you expecting from the weekend? Very tricky. I'd take a yeah. draw right now. Adam Armstrong's obviously going to be the main threat. But they have Niambi at right wing back, who is very mm. solid. Midfield of Bradley Johnson, Bradley Dack, Joe Rothwell as well. Very solid mm. in there. It's a very good team that hasn't hit full gear yet, but they are the top scorers in the championship. So they will they will want to go and score. They've got aerial threats. They've got threats in behind. They can mix it up perfectly. Tony Mowbray's a good championship manager at this level. Mm. Very tricky. I would I would bite your hand off for a draw. I'm just trying to remember the name of the younger lad they've got, Jacob. Is it Dolan? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Dolan. And then Liverpool's yeah. Harvey Elliott on the other side oh, as well. Yeah. Very solid. Um, Elliot, uh, the, uh, Elliot will uh, whip in again like Knockout and Lolly did tonight cause on his stronger left foot. Very clever player, so Sarris will have to be aware of that. Mm-hmm. But there's players coming back now for Norwich where I feel like they weren't ever going to be used tonight, like your Dowls. He's been yeah. out far too long. Mm-hmm. But they'll start slowly being introduced. And even tonight, you're being able to bring on Tete, Cantwell, McLean. They will only grow now. And hopefully, we just keep doing the gaps. You know, if you don't win, don't lose. And yeah. we'll keep going like that and we'll be very solid. Even more important with having the subs bench with a decent amount of players on now because we make five subs, of course. But let's leave it there. Uh, We'll be back with you after the game on Saturday. Let us know in the comments what you thought of tonight. Like and subscribe while you're there and enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks for watching. Let us.